the absolute value of the sum of any two real numbers is less than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of those real numbers. This is called the triangle inequality theorem, and we'll be proving it in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is an important theorem to get comfortable with so that you've got more power when working with absolute values. This won't take too long, so super quick before we look at the proof, let's just see a quick example. Suppose we've got the absolute value of 3 plus negative 2. This is certainly less than or equal to the absolute value of 3 plus the absolute value of negative 2. If two real numbers have the same sign, so they're both positive or negative, then the magnitude of their sum will be equal to the sum of their magnitudes. If one is positive and one is negative, then when we add them within the absolute value bars, their magnitudes will offset a little bit. Whereas when we add their individual magnitudes separately, they will not offset each other, they'll just combine to make a bigger number. In this case, we see that we have the absolute value of 1 is less than or equal to 3 plus 2, which is 5, and that is certainly true. All right, so let's just go ahead and get into the proof. As usual, we want to keep in mind the definition of absolute value in order to help us through this proof. The absolute value of a plus b is going to be equal to a plus b if a plus b is non-negative, so greater than or equal to zero. On the other hand, the absolute value of a plus b will be equal to negative a plus b if a plus b is negative. Thus, if we can show that both a plus b and negative a plus b must always be less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b, that will complete the proof. We want to begin by noticing four obvious inequalities. Certainly, a is less than or equal to the absolute value of a, and negative a is less than or equal to the absolute value of a. This is because a and the absolute value of a have the same magnitude and if a is negative, it will be less than its absolute value. Similarly, we know that b must be less than or equal to the absolute value of b, and negative b is less than or equal to the absolute value of b. Again, the only potential change the absolute value function might make is making the number positive, and a negative is always less than a positive. Then we can easily work our way through to our desired conclusion. Let's start with a plus b. What do we know about a plus b? Well, certainly, it's less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. Since we just remarked that a is less than or equal to its absolute value, and b is less than or equal to its absolute value. So if we replace them both with bigger numbers, we get a bigger number. That's the inequality we were looking for, so we can stop there and move on to negative a plus b. So what do we know about negative a plus b? Well, distributing the negative, it's equal to negative a plus negative b. And we just went over how negative a is less than or equal to the absolute value of a, and similarly for negative b. So if we replace them both by greater numbers, then we get a greater number. So negative a plus negative b is less than or equal to the absolute value of a plus the absolute value of b. We could have also done this in smaller steps if that makes you more comfortable. We could replace negative a with the absolute value of a and leave negative b unchanged at first. This inequality is certainly true since we replaced negative a with a number that's greater than or equal to it. And then in a second separate step, we could replace negative b with its absolute value by the same reasoning. All right, now what's the significance of what we just showed? Well, we began by pointing out by definition of absolute value, the absolute value of a plus b is gonna have to be equal to a plus b or negative a plus b. And we just showed that a plus b is less than or equal to that sum and negative a plus b is less than or equal to that sum. Thus, we know for sure that the absolute value of a plus b 
will be less than or equal to that sum, the absolute value of A plus the absolute value of B. And that completes the proof. And that's the proof of the triangle inequality theorem. You're definitely going to want to keep this inequality in mind if you're going through a real analysis course. Hope this video helped you understand the proof. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description.